I saw a picture of Albert Einstein's office and it was a complete mess. And um, I feel like we'd be really good bunkies because <laughs> I, I don't mind if I have a mess around me. <laughs> but I did clean it up this morning. I uh, got the skull out and uh, I made sure to bring out the statue. And um, yeah, now my <laughs> office is cleaner looking, at least on camera. The government spends an unknown amount of money on um, software written by members of the government. But the American people never get to benefit from that software because it's secret. It's cybersecurity software or it's hacking software or sometimes it's like forensic software, um, which means um, software you would use to analyze a computer. Um, there, there are a lot of different types of government software. For example, there's like the F-35 software the F-35 is uh, a very advanced plane that uses computers to um, assess, the, assess the situation in the air. And so that's another example of government software. Um, so I believe that we should make government software public. Um, not all of it, obviously, but I think we should specifically have government people writing software that's meant to benefit the masses. Because um, I need to create jobs, everyone and their dog is learning how to use a computer or learning how to program a computer, and um, you might find out that there are people that are so smart um, that can work in, in a field other than their own field. For example, um, say you're an English major or you're a history major, and you start working on a project that teaches children how to read um, that is, is, is a game that kids can play at home, they can play it after school. Um, um, so, so say that you are um, someone that has nothing to do with computers, but then you start working on the story for this game. And then you find out, wow, I'm actually a really good coder because uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone from a very high up co corporation said, his best coders don't have coding degrees. They're like self-taught people, like kind of like me. I, I view myself as self-taught. I only took two Java classes in, in, in actual college. The rest of my courses were like from Princeton on the internet and from, um, from uh, Europe, from, from Switzerland. So um, I want to put more people to, to work writing software that benefits the masses. I want to really, really work on production value. I want to spend a lot of money on like creating what would be a company that's actually just going to benefit our children. So, um, like I said, I want to have uh, children's games, but they can also be e-learning programs. And um, if a teacher has 40 students, what we can do is either split them off 20 and 20 with with that teacher and then 20 with um, uh, 20 would go to the computer lab and then they would rotate back and forth or we can even do like 10 with the teacher 30 in the computer lab and then constantly rotate them in um, because kids kids need to move anyways like that's kind of how um, schools or schools do it is they have elementary school kids they learn for like 15 20 minutes and then they they, they move, they do something else, they learn something else. And um, the max you would ever really want to do it is 30 minutes. So um, it, it, this, is a, this is actually a good way to teach kids. Um, I want to have an open source network IDS. Don't really want to explain it, but um, it, it's kind of like when you download Snort and you, Snort is, an, is a network IDS, and then you can like update it and it brings in its own rules. Well, um, I would like the government to update an, an IDS and also like have one that's like configured um, and, and, and then like an elementary school or a, a middle school or a public school or a corporation that wants to use the NIDS because this, this wouldn't actually be connected to the internet. This is for like you're sniffing traffic and it goes to the computer and then this, I, I, don't, even, I don't think the NIDS would connect to the internet at all. So you wouldn't even have to worry about the government spying on you. You could use this NIDS software anywhere in the world. Um, this is a great way to catch hackers. And this is part of my bigger plan for an NIDS that's lightweight, that is built into the computer, that's built into the operating system, that doesn't capture all traffic. It prioritizes which traffic it analyzes. 
um, which I don't know if that takes a lot of processing power in general, just, just trying to figure out what to throw out. But uh, all I'm saying is it doesn't do deep packet inspection on everything, but it can. And it also, um, I think that, like, that one would be connected to the internet. Um, and I think that's pretty much how we end hacking is with a local NIDS combined with like antivirus software and that, all that crap. All right, so that would be open source. And then also I've said I, we should do a SCADA NIDS, which SCADA is um, supervisory control and data acquisition. It is for industrial control systems. It is for water treatment facilities. It's for um, pipelines. It's for, um, um, for any sort of factory work that's automated. Um, and I think the government should make available an NIDS that it, but the problem is you do have to configure it. You're going to have to say, well, this computer is not allowed to talk to this computer. So it is going to be something that needs to be configured. But I believe that if you have a degree in information technology and um, you're configuring an, an, an IDS for a SCADA system, uh, you should be able to do that. Um, I, I think it should be pretty simple. And that's why I'm all about like, we're going to make GUIs that ask questions that can figure the software for us. For example, the NIDS would need to be configured also. Um, and so I think we can make the software so user friendly that everyone's gonna wanna use it. And it's like, well, why would you wanna have um, an open source software that kicks hackers ass, asses that um, everyone can configure, like our enemies can use it? Yes, we can all stop hackers together. Um, and like, I don't know if that means that we're going to go the lightweight NIDS route, but I think that probably is the way to do it. All right, so the AI doctor, is it open source? I don't really know. Um, but I'm a firm believer that even if you're a super rich person, and you're, you're just because you're a super rich person doesn't mean you have time to go to the doctor. So sometimes you might just want to go talk to your AI doctor. And for those sort of calls, those sort of chats with your doctor, maybe it'd be like a dollar or something. We're going we're to charge you for computer crunching time. I don't know, but it might just be free. Um, but all I'm saying is like, if we're not working on an AI doctor from like, if the government isn't working on an AI doctor, what's the point of the government? Because yes, I might not be able to accomplish this goal. You're going to have trouble making an MRI machine that catches everything. There are a lot of different things to catch and it, this might actually be harder than you realize. Okay, you can tell me that, but what I'll tell you is if I fail, at least I move in, 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 in a certain direction. And um, the fact that we aren't doing moonshot projects on things like AI doctors, AI lawyers right now is nuts. It, it, it's, it's just baffling to me because it's like, you know, we need to put people to job, put people to work. Like all I need to do is have this guy mining more often so that we can waste more. That's all I need. But, um, that's your perspective. That's, that's the government right now's perspective. We need people working and it doesn't matter what they're doing. I think we need people working in certain directions. And if you're not trying to have an AI doctor, then I, I just, that, I, I don't understand why the government wouldn't, I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me because I believe in investing in a way that benefits people. Like I believe in investing in a way that um, moves us where we want to be, which is, I want to be able to talk to an AI doctor. I want to be able to go stick my leg in an MRI machine and be told I'm okay for, for like something minor. I, I, I don't understand why that's, why that's a problem, but, um, I guess for some people it's just, it's offensive that we would use a computer that a doc, like a general doctor could consult, a, like a general doctor will consult an AI doctor someday. If they don't, then no one's going to trust them. So, um, all I'm saying is that's, that's just how it's going to be. And if the government doesn't accept that, then like, are you, are you really, are, are you trying to be a copy? Are, are you trying to keep Xerox in the copy business or what, what, I don't know what Xerox would be in. Who are you trying to keep Xerox in the, in the printer bit? Oh no, not printer business. Printer business is probably suffering pretty bad. What like the typewriter business, who is trying to keep us in the typewriter business? Joe Biden, still probably uses a typewriter odd enough. I, and that, 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 I'm using this as, as symbolic because what I'm telling you is doctors are typewriters, but it's not just that. It's, it's the doctors are someday going to have to be completely different. They're going to have to be researchers. Um, 
um, they're going to have to be people that make AI doctors better. All right, so AI lawyers, I've already talked about it, but how would I write this program? Um, I would basically just watch a hundred different lawyers um, on each, like that do the same thing and watch what questions they ask and what, and consider potential paths. And then I would try to have people use the AI doctor and if the path didn't work, then I would intervene and then I would update the AI doctor and it would like kind of figure, it would kind of, there are sections of the law that you have to move towards. All right, so, um, and then you would also prioritize what you say based on success. Like, and you could actually, if the AI doctor is constantly doing cases and, and constantly finding out what's successful and what's not successful um, and collecting that data, then the AI doctor can actually adjust based on success rates. All right, so um, I, I don't know how many of you guys signed, did your taxes and um, filled out the thing, thing online and then next thing you know, like it turns out it's a bait and switch. It turns out that like they're, they're saying you owe money and and you have to pay a certain amount and it was like, it was gonna be free. And I was like, well, no, it wasn't. Um, yeah, the government right now is partnering with tax software companies and I think it's pretty easy to write tax software. I think it's pretty easy to write TurboTax. And um, I think that we need to have uh, change the way that we do taxes. Because right now the taxes are just silly. Um, we need to make it easier. Um, like, why don't I already know your social security number and your like worker ID or whatever? Or like, I don't, why don't I already have your W two information like in a database? That doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. Like, I, it it really doesn't. Um, I don't understand why you have to find your information. But I think a lot of things should be, I think a lot of things should be filled out for you. All right. So, online university already talked about it. But what I will say about it is. We're going to find the best at every single subject, and then we're going to make them better. We're going to go uh, team up Martin Scorsese with um, Steven Pinker to figure out how to like make cognitive neuro neuroscience better, or what, or maybe he's—I don't know what specifically he would teach, um, but um, and then we're we're going to allow people to get really specialized too. Like if you want, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with teaching people things that, um, be, because if, if I teach someone in Asia something that they would never know without my, without me teaching them, they can use that knowledge to benefit the world. So, uh, I say, um, let's make the whole world do better. Um, I worked really hard on ending robocalls and I feel like the government now has worked hard on it too, but that might be software uh, that we need to use to in robocalls. Um, so the voting software, software I've talked about, which uses blockchain um, to link all the votes together, and it doesn't even have to do that. Um, but if, if it does do that so that I can write the code myself to test that all the votes counted, um, because they're, they'd all be linked together through hashing, um, that, that would be something that's open source, sort of, or the ledger would be open source. Like, we, I guess that wouldn't be open source, and that would just be the ledger's open, like, available to the public. It's a public ledger. Um, but the voting software probably wouldn't actually be public, I don't think, because we should probably encrypt it and use, it, use a variation of, of encryption that isn't normally used. But we don't have to do that if everyone can agree that the encryption we're using is safe. Um, but uh, I, well, I think what matters is that I want to know my vote counts. I want to know that no one else voted twice. So it, like in other countries, they like smudge red on your finger um, to show that you voted so you can't hide that, so you can't vote twice. Um, like I, the, the public ledger can protect against that um, because even if, it's a, even if you encrypt um, the name of the person or whatever and, and their address and all that crap, um, it, like it, the, the encryption would still result in the same thing well, I guess it really depends on the type of encryption. No, that's that. That's that. It wouldn't actually. All I'm saying is we can make sure that that sort of thing doesn't happen in our in our in our voting software. But um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. All I'm saying is the public ledger should make you have confidence that no one's double voting and um, and your vote counted. Because I don't feel like a lot of votes are counting, and there's no way to know that your vote counted. And I feel like our, we should we should be able to know that our vote counts. Um, all right, so I have all, the, all these other tech projects that I want to do. I'm not going to talk about them because this video is already too long. But um, yeah, 
I am very, very, very smart. And I can talk about computers because I have a master's degree in cybersecurity. And I have a lot of ideas that benefit the masses. My ideas are not about um, benefiting uh, the FBI by doubling their budget in 10 years. Well, you're saying, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm for criminal justice reform. I'm just going to double the FBI's budget and they're going to focus so much on black drug dealers that like the amount of black people incarcerated is going to go up. Trust me. But I, trust me, I'm, I'm Barack Obama. I'm for changing the criminal justice system. No, I'm not. All right. So all I'm saying is that's that's not who I am. I'm tired. I'm out of here.